waiting. Um, but my specific question was the history of gun barrel annexation. We keep referring to this property specifically from being um, put into Area 2 in 1977, but I believe that there's um, additional information that comes in in the 80s for the entire town of gun barrel was supposed to be annexed and then wasn't. So I think I requested Pete Fogg to come in help out with that. <laughs> Pete Fogg with the land use staff. Um, I'll do a brief chronology. There's obviously a lot of detail in, in each discussion piece about annexation over the years, but in chronological order, here we go, and then I'll be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Um, the original agreement reached for development of gun barrel occurred in 1963. And the understanding was that water and sewer would be provided to the area. Um, it was part of the city's interest in following a land use planning tool at that time called spokes of the wheel, where you have major corridors around an urban area, and you try and control the development between those spokes, those major um, highway connectors. In this case, it involved the diagonal highway. The city approached the Williams brothers, who were landowners in the gum barrel area and who had developed Martin Acres and other developments in Boulder asked if they would be willing to uh, consider using some of their land to move the then Boulder Country Club golf course, which was at Rapaho, because it was being used as both a public and private course, it was being totally trashed out, etc. The Williams Brothers agreed to uh, donate that land. They looked at the cost of extending water and sewer out to it and came to the conclusion that the cost would exceed any uh, logical sheet for them to provide just the water and sewer with no return. So it was also understood that there would be platting in the gum barrel area as part of the golf course move and so forth. That's all very simplified, but essentially that was the understanding was reached. And it was also understood at the time that as platting occurred and water and sewer were extended to those platted areas that they would indeed annex to the city of Boulder because they were being built to city standards at the time they were eligible for annexation, which would be contiguity and those types of things. So that's 1963. 1965, IBM announced that they were going to move to the location on the diagonal highway. Um, in 1965, there was also a straw poll conducted uh, among the residents in Gum Barrel at that time about their interest in annexation. A plurality were in favor of annexation, a lesser number were not, and then the final number were people who didn't care one way or the other. Uh, so in 1974 through 77, the city undertook a study to determine the best way to annex towards the gun barrel area with the understanding that it was to be annexed. They chose the, uh, the lever that we don't have on a map here. Basically, they chose to annex across open space to the north of the existing city limits and then east across their open space to the IBM property and then adjacency to the diagonal, which gave them contiguity to gun barrel. They chose to go through open space because they did not want to go up the diagonal and then find themselves committed to serving development between Boulder and gun barrel and filling in that entire area between J Road and Boulder, which is now largely open space. So the intent was to avoid an annexation pattern that would promote additional development on their way to gun barrel. Um, 1978, the first formal discussions began with the residents of Gum Barrel about annexation. Uh, the city offered annexation with no attached costs. Parks, playgrounds, infrastructure, all of those things would be included in an annexation package at no cost to the property owners at that time. The proposal failed by a vote of 890 to 788. A second annexation proposal was proffered, uh, and the Gum Barrel Country Club decided to withdraw their interest in that second annexation proposal, which meant <coughs> the necessary contiguity for the Gum Barrel community was uh, busted up. It's a large piece of property, and annexation could not really occur with uh, the withdrawal of the Country Club from the petition. In 1985, a third annexation a project was proposed by the city. 
Uh, the city then withdrew the application after Boulder County approved the establishment of a fire protection district in Gum Barrel. Uh, that was done in order to provide a higher level of fire protection for urban services, which the residents of Gum Barrel wanted at that time. The city and county talked about it. The county felt it was appropriate as uh, the jurisdiction and with the responsibility of public health, safety, and welfare to approve a fire protection district at that time rather than wait until a potential annexation occurred and fire could be beefed up by the city's presence in the area. So it was an act now rather than maybe later decision on the part of the county. Um, finally, in 1991 through 1993, the city and county staffs together went out to the gun barrel community, ran an exercise of all the costs associated with annexation uh, the potential benefits. The Gun Barrel Neighborhood Alliance was formed as a citizens group to represent the various neighborhoods of Gun Barrel and together with city and county staff, the Neighborhood Alliance sat down and discussed what the pressing issues seemed to be in the area and what some alternatives might be to outright annexation. That led to the formation of the Gun Barrel Special Improvement District, the Gun Barrel Public Improvement District as has been referenced in materials to you. Uh, which was approved by a vote of the Gun Barrel residents to provide uh, funding over a 13 year period, 11 year period, to do two principal things. The first was to acquire open space buffering in areas around the borders of the district, which included the so called Heatherwood Notch to the east and many properties along Jay Road, and to conduct a program of enhanced road improvements, road repairs, uh, safety traffic safety measures within Gun Barrel proper. Uh, it, was a, it was also agreed at that time that the uh, decisions about annexation in the future as a comprehensive plan policy would rest with the residents and the property owners of Gun Barrel, that it would not be pressed by the city or the county, but that as property owners became interested, collectively or individually or in other ways, to annex to the city that the city and the county would entertain that petition and move forward with those with those requests. But the policy you see in the comprehensive plan right now, which is 1.24H, describes the policy stance of both the city and the county towards gun barrel. And again, it's a voluntary basis. It is still encouraged, but it is not something that's going to be uh, under that policy, something would be initiated boldly for the entire gun barrel area by the city or the county. And that's the history in a semi-large nutshell as far as I've been able to determine. And again, there are details in each one of the annexation proposals. But uh, in short, it's been understood since 1963 that the provision of water and sewer to the area and the platting of a gun barrel initially at city urban service standards would also be accompanied by annexation by the property owners when they were eligible for annexation, which essentially meant when they had contiguity. The annexations of the open space to get to Gun Barrel provided the initial contiguity. That's why the much of the commercial industrial retail area of Gun Barrel is annexed. Thank you very much. Okay. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and if I've got any of that wrong, I'd be more than happy to scratch it out and rewrite my notes. Do we have any additional questions? Can we get 30 seconds to respond to the wildlife quarter? I believe if you want to sign up, you can, but how is the team? What's that? It's from TI. Okay.